Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Bernoun, you're watching Israeli News Live. We have a special guest today, uh, Brother Rick Warren, and as you guys can see, this is not the Rick Warren that most of you guys are accustomed with. Uh, uh, Rick here, uh, is, uh, he's, got, he, he's got an incredible page there on Facebook, End of Days, and as well, he just started his YouTube channel called Homeland Herald. And uh, Rick, I know you live in North Carolina, uh, can you tell, yes. us, tell, us, tell the people a little bit more about yourself. Well, I started in the ministry back in the 19, uh, early 1990s and have been studying biblical prophecy and uh, also been studying a lot uh, what's going on in the Middle East, the different players in the Middle East, what's lining up now, uh, especially in the light of, of uh, Daniel 8, Ezekiel 38, um, Psalm 83, uh, the nations and things that are lining up right there. And I'll tell you, brother, we're right there at it. Amen, amen. So you're not getting any kind of pension check from Saddleback Church there out of California? <laughs> no, not yet, but I suspect maybe after this video I might. <laughs> oh, gosh. I had to throw that one in there. Anyway, That's so. That's fine. That's uh, fine. I get it all the time. But hey, I was Rick Warren first. I'm not going to change my name. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, Yana did a search uh, back when this first came up, and there's there's actually quite a few Rick Warrens in the world. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. So you're 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 not you guys are not alone, you know. So it's funny though. People are, they jump to conclusions anyway. So it's all right. Uh, yeah. I, anyway, though, I brought Rick on today because we wanted to talk a little bit about the Middle East, things that are going on there uh, around Israel, etc. Looking at some of the prophecies and uh, and just at the news as as in general, because as Rick knows, you guys know as well, uh, Damascus. Uh, to be a ruinous heap, according to Isaiah 17, and we are definitely nearing that day, uh, which is concerning to me. And, and, and they've been getting hits directly on Damascus. So uh, even though the uh, Syrian army appears to be strong around Damascus, still protecting Damascus, but they, they're, they're kind of stretched out a little bit, dealing with uh, Aleppo right now. And uh, we just seen too, Rick, uh, we saw a, a threat by the Syrian army uh, regarding Aleppo. Uh, and they're ready to take it. They have actually tweeted out today for the residents. They've got 24 hours. This, this came out eight hours ago. The Syrian right. government tweeted to their people there, you got 24 hours to leave eastern Aleppo before they end up raining down all kinds of fire on top of them. And, and I may say that. Um, not necessarily literally, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit because there is a tweet on a channel that claims to be a Syrian military uh, Twitter channel there that speaks about burning alive. So we'll, we'll see about that, Rick. Anyway, Rick, what, what, have we, what are you seeing and what do you got going on on your end? Well, what I'm seeing on my end is I want to talk uh, about something Donald Trump said here a little bit. I'm going to go to uh, share a screen here so I can show the viewers. Am I up? Not yet, but you'll be up in a second. Start. There you go. It's coming in now, Rick. You're, it's, 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 up, it's up and going there. That's, that's Rick's uh, Facebook page in the end of days. Uh, yeah, that's my end of days page. I'll go ahead and bring that up. But we all know that Donald Trump stated that he was going to move the United States Embassy that is currently located in Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And that's caused quite an upheaval. Um, and there's a lot of mixed signals coming out right now from even within Trump's own campaign. Um, I've got one here from the Israel Times of Israel. This is Iran deal. Excuse me. Advisor says Trump won't rip up Iran deal signals he may not move embassy. Now, what I found a little uh, surprising here, and I did not know this, and Steve, you may want to elaborate on this just a little bit as to what the significance of this would be, but appearing to walk back statements made by the president-elect Trump and other advisors, Waleed Faris says nuclear pact will be renegotiated and the U.S. mission will only be moved to Jerusalem under consensus. I found it uh, surprising that Waleed Faris was one of Trump's foreign policy uh, advisors right now. Wow, that is interesting. Um, can you give us a little bit of insight on Wally Fares? Uh, uh, Wally Fares 
is, let's see. That's him right there, yes. Yeah, that's him right there. Well, he said Ferris didn't elaborate on uh, what consensus would be sought for such a move, uh, which would break the decades of precedent and put Washington at odds with nearly all the United Nations uh, member states. I, I don't have a lot of background information on Wally Ferris. I do know that he is a prominent Middle East expert. Um, he is often seen on uh, CNN. Uh, I think I've seen him on Fox and some of the other uh, internet news channels. Uh, he, I know he has his own uh, internet, uh, I hesitate to say ministry, but inter internet deal where he uh, talks about all the things going on. He's, he's a Middle East expert is what he is. Rick, I know you, you mentioned to me also as well, you know, the OIC, uh, all, the, all the Arabic nations there that when Donald Trump talked about moving the, uh, the embassy to Jerusalem, they all, 57 members, threatened to bring, pull their ambassadors from the United States. I mean, that's, that's, pretty, exactly right. that's, a, that's a major threat. But, but what doesn't make sense to me is what difference does it make if Trump actually were to move the embassy to Jerusalem or not? Uh, that, that just doesn't make sense. Even the PA, the Palestinian Authority, uh, right. is threatening to use everything against uh, America that they possibly can if he were to do that. Uh, just like you just pulled up on the page here, Palestinian will unleash all weapons on U.S. if Trump moves embassy to Jerusalem. What does it matter? I mean, that tells you right there. And you know, Rick, I have been hammering this for, for years now that Jerusalem is going to be an international city. It's going to be, they're going to throw the Jews out, according to Micah's prophecy in chapter 4, which clearly says they're brought home on Mount Zion, but then, they, then they're sent out of the city. You know, so, right. you know, they're right. going to internationalize this city, and I think this is where the big issue is coming in. And, you know, Rick, not long ago, I actually shared on the news here about how they redrew the lines. In fact, somebody sent me a message on Facebook just the other day. They said, Steve, uh, they were saying that you uh, said that the, the maps have been changed, and it's the Mandela effect. No, not the, I, don't, I don't even get into this thing called the Mandela Effect, period. But, you know, I think a lot of that is just people don't know their own Bible. So anyway, that's okay. The, well, that's where they're erasing Israel off the map and replacing it with Palestine. Right, right. And that's nothing to do with Mandela Effect. That's just New yeah. World Order. That is uh, what I saw was they redrew the lines on the map. But they did it based on the Oslo Accord Agreement, Rick. I, I showed it to the people. I showed them the Oslo Accord drawings and that of uh, what Jerusalem was. Like when I lived there, when I was actually a resident in Israel and lived in Jerusalem, you know, I lived in a little neighborhood called Givat Hamivitar. Givat Hamivitar is up there near French Hill, right by the university. That is no longer, according to 2016 Google Maps, that is no longer a part of Jerusalem, it is now under the West Bank control. I think that has a lot to do with this issue over moving the embassy there. But then if he says to Jerusalem, something is bigger going on, Rick, than I think what we're seeing on this. Well, look at the church they just put in Jerusalem. The church of all faiths. Oh my gosh. Uh, I want to drill down on this article just real quick here. Real, um, go ahead, go ahead. That the headline's a little misleading, if you will. It says Palestine will unleash all weapons on U.S. if Trump moves. But like I said, if you drill down into it a little bit, it says, Mansur, a U.S. educated diplomat, stressed the possible transfer of the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem, partially occupied by the Israelis, would be regarded as a belligerent act towards Palestine. Like you said, what does it matter? But then he goes on to say, if they do that, nobody should blame us for unleashing all the weapons that we have in the U.N. to defend ourselves. And we have a lot of weapons in the U.N. So since when did the Palestinian Authority become such a power player at the U.N.? Wow. That's just... You know, they aren't the only ones saying it. There's Saudi prince, and I'm going to assume this is Prince Jabir. And you mentioned this uh, just a second or two ago. If Trump moves embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, the OIC 
57 countries will withdraw ambassadors from Washington. And just to let our viewers know, the OIC is a 57-member nation. I'm not going to sit here and read out all the different... Uh, you can tell all the, all the big players, nation. Northern Africa, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, you know... Right. You know Cut, Cut, Cutter, Exactly. Bahrain, Turkey. Bahrain. All the way up to Mongolia. You got Mongolia, and then you go all the way down there to, 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 the, right. to the, you know, middle Africa, not just the northern Africa, you know, Morocco, et cetera, you know, everything in there. That, that's, that's insane what we're seeing there, Rick. And then, yes, uh, it is. This, this and, is and unprecedented. The is the organization of Islamic Conference member states. Now, when did Russia become Islamic? That's... That's interesting in itself. Now there is a large Arabic population inside of Russia, and but 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 to know that they're actually part a member state, uh, that that's just odd, Rick. I mean, it's something is going on that that we're just missing right. here, and I don't I don't know what it is. Not only are they a member state, but if you scroll down, they are an observer state, which means they have a say in anything that the OIC does. Wow. Mm, that is. I found that completely interesting. It's not good, Rick. It's not good what's going on. Well, you know, Pope Francis recently stated that they need that people needed to pray for Donald Trump that he become enlightened. I mean, think of that, Rick. To to be to be enlightened. What 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 is he, what's he referring to there? I mean, th th there's to be enlightened to the new world order, to be enlightened to the one world church, to be enlightened to the harmony, to be enlightened to the agenda 2030 that the UN is shoving down everybody's throat. Wow, and you know, Rick, another thing thinking about that. I know this is a little off subject here, but uh, I was looking today. John Kerry, you know, he went down to Antarctica. He returned. Uh, he, he, some people may, may not understand this when it says Christ Church in New Zealand. That's actually the, the name of the airport where he goes to. I just think yeah. it's interesting they named the airport Christ Church. Uh, yeah. and, and yet there's a lot of well-known people. I, I'm Chuck Missler, which I know Chuck. Uh, first person I ever interviewed with uh, when, when I first wrote the book uh, Yom Suf was Chuck Missler. So uh, Chuck moved down to New Zealand. So it's kind of funny how all the, a lot of religious figures have moved to New Zealand thinking this is a safe haven when everything goes bad in America. But yeah. um, and what I thought well, Kerry was... Went, Kerry went to the Antarctic for one we reason only. And I was to say he's the only Secretary of State to have visited all seven continents on his, on his t during his tenure. Well, well then he's, he's, he's made that successful. What was odd, though, is that John Kerry said he would not do any media statements whatsoever about his trip there. He would not answer any questions. Um, and it can't be one particular place. I know that Kirill went there. Uh, now Kerry's gone there. A lot of people are starting to go there, and, I, and I'm really curious to know why. But what was odd to me, though, on this was today, I, w I saw an article about him going down there. They're just, they, they showed the pictures and stuff as a professional news company that did it. And I was just going to take and post it on Israeli News Live Facebook page. I tried five times, and not one time would it let me post the article. It, I, would, I would hit publish, and as soon as it went on, it disappears. And then only to find out that several other people had noticed the same thing. They were just posting articles about John Kerry's trip to Antarctica and disappearing. What is, I mean, here's the thing. Maybe, maybe, uh, uh, I think it was Mark, no, it wasn't Mark Toner. It was um, uh, John Kirby uh, for the U.S. State Department that announced his trip that he was going there to Antarctica. I'm just wondering if maybe John Kirby was never supposed to have mentioned this, but it went out not realizing that he shouldn't have. It's entirely possible. And, you know, but now they want to keep it hush-hush because he went there, you know, John Kerry could have easily just disappeared for a couple of days and nobody would have really, really realized what he did. Uh, yeah, you know, nobody would have noticed, yeah. No, they, they wouldn't have paid any attention. But now that John Kirby made the announcement at the State Department, uh, and then why doesn't anybody else mention it? I'm just wondering, what is the big deal there? I know that there was... A, well, I, know that, I know Russia has an outpost down there that's been quite active lately. Yes. Well, there was a report in Russian media. You couldn't probably find it in American media anywhere, but the Russian media, when the Saudis had dug up this uh, some kind of art 
ark that they found there in, in, uh, in one of their excavations there, killed several people. And, and in, in, in American media, everybody just calls it conspiracy theories, but it actually was in Russian media. We actually pulled it up in there. But supposedly the Russians took uh, an armada of military ships and they transported this ark down there to Antarctica. Um, but what gets me though, if that's the case, I notice it like Creel. Creel goes down there, uh, Kerry goes down there, but they're not going to the same place. They're all going to their own little places down there because the U.S. has theirs, uh, you know, yeah. etc. And and I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, you know, Planet X is coming. I don't know about all these things. I I, I, I don't get into all that. So, but. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think it's weird. It's really strange that this stuff's going on, and, and I don't know what to think about it. But anyway, I'm sure we'll... Antarctica, uh, Antarctica, isn't that where they have the uh, the largest seed bank in the world? Yes, they did. They did. That was the other thing, too, Rick, that I noticed was that they had made uh, a like a national reserve for the wildlife in this area. And they, yeah. they said it's because... It's the only untouched natural resource still left on the planet. Uh, but I kind of question that as well, Rick, because it doesn't make sense. I mean, it would be, it would be great. I, I appreciate it for the wildlife there. I appreciate it for the animals, the, the marine life, et cetera, that they, can't, they cannot fish there. They cannot, nothing can be done there. And you can't, if you try to go there, military will stop you. That's what makes me wonder. Yeah, and there's no whaling up to 30 miles off the perimeter coast, if I'm, if I'm correct about that. Exactly. But, Something is but, going on. It's the only time where you get all the nations together, China, Russia, America, where they actually agree on doing something, and that's at Antarctica. Why can they agree to do something there, but they can't agree to do anything when it comes to Europe or, or, or Syria, any of these places? What is it about the Antarctica that they can all come to an agreement on, on there? I mean, this. That's an excellent question. Well, you know, Rick, when we get done with this broadcast and it goes on air, we can go back and look at the comments, and we'll probably get 40 million answers of why. <laughs> so, that's one of the nice things. That's right. About YouTube. All right, let's move on, Rick. What else you got? Well, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, what's going on. Uh, we kind of touched on this in the beginning, but uh, Aleppo. You said you saw a post about uh, that Aleppo may be burning. Yes, yes. Let me pull that up. This this really kind of struck my got my attention majorly, and let me just show the people here. This is called Der, uh, Der El Zor massacre, uh, Syrian military cap. Now, whether or not this is actually an official um, uh, page for the the uh, the Syrian government, I cannot say. But it says right here, four hours ago. This days will go down in history as the days we burn terrorists alive in Aleppo. Uh, let me let me make it bigger for the people there, right? Just so they can see that. That's because that's. I want to make sure people see this, not just that I'm saying it. We'll go down in history as the days we burn terrorists alive in Aleppo and liberate the city. Now, Rick, the United States, Russia, as well, they both still use uh, phosphoric weapons. Uh, they yes, use they the, they do use the, uh, as far as, they won't use it on a civilian population, but they both have in their writings that they will use the phosphoric weapons when it comes to enemy combatants. The problem is, in Aleppo, there's a lot of civilians there. And I'm surprised to see this, but then again, I've seen several videos appear on the internet where um, you know, cluster bombs, et cetera, have been used uh, by the Syrian uh, government on different areas. Now, according to Russia, uh, that when they begin the, the, uh, the dawn of victory uh, uh, thing that they're planning on doing here... That's the name of their operation. Yes, they're going to do this... Um, I was just looking real quick to see if they responded back. I did, by the way, I did send a message to the... Uh, the, the people of this page here requesting a response about this. What do they mean by being burned terrorist alive? Um, you know, because that's pretty provocative. And, I, and I've really, I've, I've, I've taken a, a strong stand for President Bashar al-Assad because 
I have watched how the U.S. Uh, Obama administration has been backing the terrorists that are, that, are, that are murderers, that behead children, that murder uh, women and everything else, and Assad yes. has not gone and, that route. But when I see uh, something, something like this, Rick, it just bothers me to see that this type of statement oh yeah. is being made. Oh, there any child of God, my friend. Amen, amen. Now, let me just... I just had a, uh, I just had a uh, alert come up on my Twitter feed. Um, it's from DEFCON Warning System. It's the only one I see, so I can't give you any further confirmation, but it says the Kuznetsov fleet launches first strike on Aleppo. Large-scale military operation beginning. Okay, amen. All right, then. So you guys, you are hearing it right now, uh, which this will be... We're not running live. We'll be, it'll be up and posted here just in a few minutes there. Uh, and one other thing, Rick, mentioning that there, I'll pull this one here up on the screen for people as well. Uh, back on October the 13th, we had reported where the Syrian military had claimed that they had shot down one of Israeli's Air Force's planes. Now, they have just posted on their Twitter page here as well, who can remember the last shot down of an IAF, Israeli Air Force that is, jet over southern Syria a couple of months ago. That's October 13th. Well, take a guess about this picture. And then they put these things in here. Now, we don't know, Rick, so I've asked Rick about this as well, because Rick's got a little bit of understanding of uh, aviation aircraft from America. Uh, but, and, and of course, we're not seeing any wreckage of a plane. We're only seeing these two uh, pieces here. But if you look at a, uh, if you look at an actual, um, let's see, here we go, Israeli aircraft here, it does resemble... Um, and the guy's looking on the screen there, and I'll point it out for you right here. This part right here, now Rick says that's actually on both sides of the fuel tank there, those tubes right there, they are attached, as you see in the other picture there, they got the brackets here at the beginning, and they got the brackets back here at the rear of this as well. Uh, now whether or not the Israelis detached something or something after they had been hit, I cannot say, but it's kind of interesting that they're bringing this up at this point here. Of course, we see no other wreckage, and it was uh, supposedly, according to them, was shot down in the Golan, which was not under uh, Israeli, excuse me, Syrian army control. Uh, so I, I don't know, Rick. I don't know if, if, that, if well, there's anything at, to look it. Look at that uh, wreckage there. There's no uh, scorch marks on it. No. So that tells me that the the plane must have went down with the fuel tanks attached, and there was no massive explosion or fire um hopefully the iaf pilot ejected and got out safely yeah i do believe that the pilot got out safely the israelis say that they were shot at but they do deny the reports that they were actually shot down and um you know there is on the picture here you can see there's a lot of stuff around it and then you can see a little bit of the metal there so i don't really know what the deal was on this but anyway, that's their claim. I, I won't, you know, I can't say yay or nay. I have no idea for sure on that, Rick. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but, uh, but at any rate there, let me, while, while they mentioned that Aleppo, let's just, I'm going to real quick pull up, Rick, or if you want to look on your end there just to see. Yeah, here we go right now. RT is, I think, I know it just says breaking. Syrian mil militants shell army positions with gas in Aleppo injure 28 reports RT news that's another big issue too Rick that's been going on here regularly the chemical they, weapon. they've been using the chemical weapons on the Syrian yeah. army and this is done by the militants this is done by the US backed rebels Al Nusra Al Qaeda and they've all joined forces so you really can't even distinguish them apart anymore and you know and the thing is too Rick that They've blamed so many times the Syrian government for doing these things, but the people that have had control of the, of the chemical weapons factory for the last couple of years has been the U.S.-backed rebels the entire time. So Yeah, the FSA. Right, so now they're doing that. And then, of course, as you just said, you got the report just now that they have actually started their campaign. Uh, the Kuznetsov uh, aircraft carrier. Yeah, let's see if I can see. You know, a lot of people don't realize that aircraft carrier is... It's Russia's only one, but it's, it's, my gosh, it's not even really an aircraft carrier. I mean, it's, it's only got five or six planes on it. It does have the KA-51A attack helicopters. I don't know if you've ever seen them, Stephen, but they're the ones with the double ro rotors on the top. Those things are equivalent to the America's A-10 Warthog in our 
tournament only because the Warthog is, of course, a plane. But uh, these are very, very formidable, formidable attack helicopters, and they've got 15 to 20 of those on that. But then again, they also carry 20 to 30 different types of cruise missiles. On, on the uh, helicopter itself? No, no, on the, on, the, on the aircraft carrier, the Kuznetsov. Oh wow! I didn't know they could actually launch cruise missiles from the yes, from the aircraft a, carrier. They have a very high cruise missile capacity. They also have the uh, destroyer, the Peter the Great, yes. in with this group, and that is a very formidable uh, naval weapon. They also have their submarine down there that has two hundred nuclear warheads yes. on board. Yes, that was seen in the port of Tardis back in August and has disappeared. Yeah, nobody gonna know where that's at. So, wow. No, we're not gonna find that. And now that they now that they have actually they have started now uh, according to the um, uh, what was the name of the uh, report you were looking at? That was um, they started they've launched an attack and you saw that on um, on Twitter. Twitter, but yeah, what was the name of the thing again, Rick? Oh, the DEFCON warning De system. DEFCON, yes. What, what, as far as DEFCON two, what are they, what are they reporting that we are at in America right now? Are we still at, at, at a, what was it, a DEFCON four or something like that, or? Well, they backed off of that and they went to a DEFCON five. Last I saw, um, of course, this is this is taking in only nuclear war. You know, it's not taking into consideration any type of other conflicts or anything that's going on. Right. Um, I found it kind of surprising they went back down to a DEFCON 5, but, you know, is that real or is that not real? Now, there's another uh, thing that you could, if, if, you're, if the viewers would go to the uh, Fort Detrick webpage of the United States Army, there is the only posting of what's called the FPCON, the Force Protection Condition. And what that calculates is terrorist activity within CONUS, within the continental United States. And right now, they are at FPCON 3. They just raised it from 4 to 3. It levels up, you know, 1 being the worst, 5 being everything's honky-dory, um, as same as the DEF CON does. Now, That's why why are they why do they have that at a three right now? What are, do you know? Do you have any idea on that? Because there are some uh, uncorroborated and unsubstantiated threats, uh, especially the ones that came out uh, against Washington D.C., Texas, and Virginia. Uh, those are still ongoing. They have they have not leveled down on those. Wow! Wow! And uh, Rick, real quick, what's what's the situation like in America right now with the protest and things going on, uh, the anti-Trump protest? Well, the protests are huge, um, and they're starting to get violent. It remains to be seen what happens tonight. Last night, the worst cities seem to be Portland, Memphis, New York City, um, San Francisco, of course. San Francisco on Friday, uh, they were showing a live shot of high school students that were leaving high school and leaving their schools in all the different districts and meeting up to go march against Trump. Uh, that really blew my mind. I mean, what are these? Uh, these kids weren't even old enough to vote. You know, this, wow. this is if you look at the, look at the protests and you look at the uh, compilation of, of different people there and you read the different signs. It's it's amazing because you'll have the Black Lives Matter. You'll have the LBGTQ. You'll have the anti hate groups. You'll have anti Trump, but they're all compiled into one. So in my in my humble opinion and and possibly unlearned opinion as far as this goes, I would think that that they're just hijacking this election to push forth their own agenda. Do you, it wouldn't surprise me it wouldn't surprise me at all if Soros was behind it. Um, as a matter of fact, there were twelve buses that were found near the protest in Austin, Texas. And 
It was for, they said it was for a conference, and I don't recall the name of the company, but when you looked into the company, Soros was one of the leading advisors on the board. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of funny you say that because we reported that the other day. Uh, Eric Tucker was yes. the guy that, that actually, he's the one that took the photographs of it. Uh, That's right. Now, I did not know Soros was a leading uh, uh, um, advisor on the board, but I did find out from my own research that Soros was, for Tableau, he is, uh, owns like 30% of the stock in the company. And, you know, several people, though, had came out and said they were at the conference. No, they were not involved in the protests. And, yes, the buses were uh, actually leased by uh, Tableau. But, in reality, then, Soros leased the buses as well, uh, if, that, if that be the case. And so, you know, Eric, he, he kind of bowed out. He was a very nice young man. He wrote an article on his blog, and he says, look, I apologize like Tableau is the one that really did this. And, you know, he didn't want to stir up any hype. And, and I'm not interested in hype either. I just want to know the facts. But when, once I saw that Soros was involved in it, I'm like, okay, everybody already knows Soros is involved in all kinds of nonsense uh, that, that's going on in America. And I'll tell you something, too, that's interesting on this, too, uh, uh, Rick, is that if you look at Soros' and the vol involvement in Ukraine, if you look at what went on, what, what, how Ukraine actually uh, imploded from protests and everything, you know who was right. actually there when these protests began in Ukraine? John McCain. Wow. John McCain was there, and John McCain was saying, the United States government is here with the protesters here, and we back you and your independence. And the protest was all because Yanuk not Yanukovych, yeah, Yanukovych, who was the uh, president at the time, had rejected the, the deal with the, with the European Union and took the deal with Russia because why? It would save his people millions of dollars in, in taxpayer money to do it, do it that way. But, right. oh my gosh, Rick, oh, I'm going to be doing a special so broadcast on that. Stephen, I mean, it's, you just can't keep up with it. It's just unbelievable how fast things are moving right now. It is. It is, Rick. And I've never, I've never in my life seen things go as fast as they're going. I, I'm, I'm alarmed at it. Uh, I mean, some people have wondered why have I gotten into the American issue when we're, we mostly deal with Russia, the Middle East, uh, European, NATO, uh, things like that. But it's more so, Rick, because I am an American. And, of course, I was watching the election from the standpoint of whoever became president would affect what we're dealing with here in the Middle East as well as in uh, NATO on, in, in, in the Russian relationship. So we began yes. to follow that as well because of that. Trump talking about uh, stopping and not, not having war, and that was a major issue for us. Uh, whereas Clinton, Putin said, guarantee we're going to war. Uh, so yeah. it's been a big deal. So anyway, you got anything else, Rick? Well, yeah, just real quick, uh, speaking about NATO, I saw a tweet today that, and you can either verify, you might be able to verify this, I don't know. I saw a tweet today that Israel has joined NATO for some exercises. That is true. And I knew this from a few days ago. I haven't actually reported it yet. The, the odd thing is, though, uh, if you can give us some specifics on it as well, Rick, the, the thing that got me, though, is that when Israel got involved in this, I was blown away by it because I'm thinking, wait a minute, Israel is not a NATO member. What are they doing getting involved in these exercises with NATO if they're not a NATO member? What's NATO doing letting them get involved if they're not a NATO member? Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's and Israel has tried to become a NATO member before, but they've never been allowed to be a NATO member. What, what's all this about? It's all about the theater. It's all about the theater of war and what's going at, what's going, what's happening now, and what's going to happen a little bit down the road. Rick, do you think that the United States is going to get involved with Syria before Obama leaves office? Wow. Yes, I do. I do. I think it. I think it. It's all going to hinge as to how hard Russia hits Aleppo. With this latest uh, onslaught, or what is what is the operation against Stephen? I'm sorry. Uh, Days of victory. Yes, uh, so, dawn, dawn of victory. I think is the name. Dawn of victory. Yeah. The dawn of victory operation. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, 
If it goes down like what the Syrian post was on there, they're going to burn them alive, and we start seeing a lot of this. Uh, even if uh, Russia, I know Russia said they were not going to be targeting directly in the city. They were going to deal with the, uh, the terrorists that are on the outskirts of the city. And, but nonetheless, you can count on one thing. They're going to, the White Helmets, which is nothing but a terrorist group, they're going to take and capitalize on anything they possibly can, and they're going to feed that to the American public as well as the European uh, groups here to say that they have overstepped their bounds. If we don't step in now, there will be no humanity right. left. You know, but when it comes to Mosul, the word, the truth's not being told, Rick. I mean, we had 16 American soldiers killed yeah. in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in Mosul already. Yeah, I know. It's, been, it's, it's rough. Um, I think between that and the amount of chemical weapons that are used will determine whether or not Obama will get into it or not. I agree. I agree. We'll have to see what happens there. So... Very strange. We'll see how his legacy goes. And that's the only yes, thing sir. that could probably change. Uh, you know, so many people are worried, Rick, about him staying in power. I don't think he's going to stay in power. No. Um, I don't think so either, Stephen. It just, it's, it, you, know, you see all, uh, all the posts on the Internet about martial law and, and everything. I just, I, I just don't see it happening. I may be wrong. Uh, I may come on the air. Two months from now, and say, "Oops," but uh, yeah. I just don't see it happening. I see, I see Trump taking over. I do see him taking over myself. I wouldn't be surprised though if they end up having to do martial law, things get out, get crazy. But I don't think it's going to stop him from taking over. Um, and I think, I think what's 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 happening though, Rick, is you got a lot of people that have prophesied that Obama's the Antichrist and he'll declare martial law and that'll be the end of America and he'll stay into office. Uh, we, we saw this though with Bush, uh, you yeah. know, everybody thought that Bush was going to stay in office and he was going to declare martial law. It's not to say that he won't declare martial law, but I have one, one guy that sent me a message before Donald Trump was ever elected president, a week or so before. I mentioned it in passing on one of my broadcasts there, but he stated to me that, they, that he had friends inside the government high up that said to him years ago that when you see the president that calls for building a wall on the southern border, you know that the new world order is ready to be uh, put into place. Wow. And, well, and, and I'm like, go, yeah, I'm like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Donald Trump, I thought Donald Trump's supposed to be a good guy, you know? But then I begin to look back at Donald Trump's history. They've been grooming him for being president. I, I saw his interview with Oprah Winfrey and with another journalist that had him on television, and they always kept asking him because he kept talking about being president of the United States one day. Yeah. You know, and yeah. but he would always say, no, 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 because if I got in, I'd really make a difference, and people probably wouldn't like what I have to say or what I would do, and you know, I don't know. We'll have to see, Rick. I don't either. So. I like the fact that we may not go to war with Russia. That makes me feel a lot better. So, yeah. unless Obama does something stupid before uh, he gets out of office, that's entirely possible, but not probable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Rick, good night. Thank you for coming on. And yeah, good night, Stephen. It was great being with you. All right, one second, Rick. God bless you guys for watching. Thank you for watching there. Be sure to check out Rick's uh, uh, page there on Facebook. End of days on Facebook. There, I'm sure it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, Rick has a lot of good information. He's always posting there in his uh, YouTube channel, Homeland Herald, uh, which I'm sure you can get that information from his Facebook page as well. Shalom.